now as we are mostly aware of by now. In the mid-60s, British Rail just... just... T t couldn't catch a break with anything. Um, I mean, part of it was their fault. In fact, most of it was their fault. I I've gotten a lot of people pointing this out, but British Rail didn't produce a lot of the bad deals. They just contracted outside sources to do it, and those sources were bad. But... My argument here is that, no, it's still their fault, because they were the ones that were rushing the diesels into service without proper testing, and it, 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 this was this was their plan. You know, it, it was their baby. The modernization plan was their idea. So, to say that they don't have any responsibility here, when all they received was crap, for the most part, there were exceptions, but, you know, you know is, is ludicrous to me. Like, I'm not saying British Rail always does everything wrong, because they obviously don't. But especially at that time, they did a lot that was wrong. Now, one of the things that did turn out okay was the Class 14. The Class 14 is also known as the Teddy Bear. And to be honest, I love that name because it really is just the cutest little diesel you have ever seen in your life. It's small, but powerful for its size, and they were just a adorable locomotives. The nickname Teddy Bear is actually sourced at George Cole, who was the shop foreman at Swindon Works, who produced the engine. He once said, we've built the Great Bear, now we're going to build a Teddy Bear. The Great Bear, by the way, was a steam locomotive they produced about 50 years prior. That could actually go on my worst trains ever list. I might, I might throw it on there because it really didn't turn out that great, but it was really good for PR. That was about all it was good for because it was like their flagship locomotive. But actually as a train, as an engine, it really was a failure. The teddy bear, on the other hand, r ran extremely well, like, even from the start. It was small, simple, but it functioned. It was great for shunting and switching work. It could do small passenger runs if they needed it to. Like, these were decent little engines. So, what went wrong? Well, they were originally built for British Rail, like I said. The thing was, when British Rail received them, they realized that the envisioned work they had for them, uh, weren't there. Like, 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 they didn't actually have any work for them. They moved them around a few times, but even doing shunting work, they were so small that in some places they couldn't handle the weight, like at the docks, without two of them. And the thing about these diesels is that with two of them, you need two engineers. Whereas modern diesels, like, if you chain them together, you still only need one crew. In this case, there needed to be two. So they were a little inefficient in that regard. Just two years into the teddy bear's life cycle, their jobs just didn't exist. I mean, they could be used for shunting work, but that was about it. And this is where I'm going to bring up the argument. Like, yeah, maybe you had too many, but uh, don't tell me you don't need things shunted around. Don't, don't tell me... That, that, that you didn't need that. Like, what what like what, what else is going to shunt stuff? What, 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 what else are you going to do? What, the class 15th and 16th? That's what's going to happen? You're going to use them? Because those don't work. We already talked about this. The 14th do. Like, come on now. I, I'm just saying, be reasonable here. You have a working product, which is really rare in this era, and you're going to say, eh, get rid of it. And that's what they did. That's what they did. They had a working diesel that they probably could have found a use for, and instead of getting rid of the 15th and 16th way sooner, they got rid of the 14th instead. Now, fortunately, they were not all scrapped, and in fact, some were sold off to other smaller companies, like mining companies, because they were small enough that they could be used for this purpose. In that regard, they performed quite well, because, again, these are not bad diesels. The teddy bears are very useful little trains, you know, dealing with smaller lines, and for mining work, they were exceptional. But even then, by the late 70s, most of the mining in the UK had declined, so they didn't really have a purpose there. But then quite a few found their place on preserved lines and heritage railways. In fact, at least 18 have been preserved, which is quite a significant percentage of the total that were ever produced. Only 56 of the teddy bears were ever made. So that's a great deal that managed to survive long after many of them were scrapped. And it makes sense if you think about it, because not just from a preservation perspective, you know, in terms of people liking these diesels and thinking they're cute, but on heritage railways, small diesels like this are incredibly helpful. Like, literally just doing the work, like setting up trains and doing shunting work. 
whatever the heritage lines may be doing that day, like, you know, moving the passenger cars into position, like, small diesels are incredibly good for that. So their usefulness is twofold. People like seeing them, but also they can be extremely helpful when it comes to heritage rail lines in their operation. But this story doesn't end here, and it goes from wholesome, seeing that these locomotives found a new lease on life in the modern age, to hysterical because we're back to British Rail again. Remember, remember bro, British Rail didn't have any use for these things. They, 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 they paid for their production. They ordered them. They brought them into service and then said, oh wait, no, we just wasted a whole bunch of taxpayer dollars. Let's just get rid of them now. No, 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 get this. And I promise you, I am not making this up because this so rarely happens, but it did. Teddy Bear, number D9504, was leased in 2005 from its preservation group. To where, you ask? Back to British Rail. Technically, National Rail, their high-speed one line, which is a high-speed railway linking London with the Channel Tunnel. It was still British Rail. It was still their, 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 their part of the line. Like, it's it was still their responsibility, and, and, and they... They brought back a diesel in 2005. In 2005, 40 years after they said they had no use for these, they leased one to work on their new high-speed, technologically sophisticated line doing, well, marshalling and stabling of the wagon concrete pumping trains. Because apparently they didn't have anything else that could have done this. But the 40-year-old teddy bear is coming back into service and helping create a high speed line for the for British Rail. Like, are you guys serious? Like, I I know you didn't have any use for them at the time, but also these were one of your few engines that functioned. Like, compared to the 15s and 16s and 17s, God help us, the, the, the 14s, the teddy bears were exceptional little diesels, and you're telling me that you couldn't find a way to use them back then. Yet 40 years later, all of a sudden, hey, can we get one of those back? It's just embarrassing. If you if you're asking, you know, from an outsider looking in, I mean, again, I'm not aware of the actual inner workings of British Rail in terms of what was going on exactly. I wasn't there, you know, I I, I wasn't in charge. But all I'm saying is that this is a government-funded agency that doesn't spend their own money. They spend they are funded by taxpayer dollars from from the United Kingdom's public infrastructure, and you guys got rid of a diesel that you thought was useless and then brought it back. I, 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 look, I just don't like you, is where I'm at. It, 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 and it's, it's troubling, because I don't, I, don't, I don't really like feeling that way about things, but, but here we are. But that's the story of the teddy bear. If you live in the UK and have gone to Heritage Railway, they're all over the place, so you probably have seen one if you're a regular, you know, connoisseur of that sort of thing. Like I said, cutest diesel I ever did see, and I think Teddy Bear is a very appropriate name, and I'm glad they found usefulness, you know, over time. I think they definitely deserve it, and I just had to talk about them, because like I said, someone recommended them for worst ever list, and I can't put them on there. They're not bad! They were mismanaged, but they're not bad. And how can you call something bad when, like, you know, it was good without modifications, and then 40 years later, the original railway wants it back? Like, that's their fault. It's not the engine's fault. Good lord. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.